In this video, we are designing some Pickle Rick earrings. If you'd like to see this project come together, be sure to check out this video right up here. But this video is all about the design. Okay, we're going to start off making a square, and this is going to represent our workpiece. Uh, it's six inches square, and I'm going to use a blue outline, uh, which usually re represents like a raster engrave. But since we're not going to be using the raster engrave, I'm just going to use the blue outline for this particular design. Over in Google, I'm going to go and search for Pickle Rick Clip Art. I'm going to switch over to the Images tab and then over to the Tools tab here. And I'm going to, under Color, I'm going to choose Black and White, and that will give me some nice black and white images. I scroll down and I found this image here that I really like. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and paste it into Inkscape. From here, we're going to do a trace bitmap. Uh, just open that up then click OK. And basically what that does is it creates a vector version of that uh, black and white image. So I don't need that bitmap anymore, so I'm going to delete that. Uh, this is a little bit tall, so I'm going to make this about an inch and a half tall. Uh, and then we'll probably come back to this a little bit later to resize it. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to uh, flip this horizontally. I like the engraving to be on the back side of the earrings. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, and then I'm going to come up here to Object, Break Apart, and that's going to break apart all the components. And then I'm going to come back here to Union. And what that's going to do is going to take everything and just kind of smoosh it all together into one. I'm going to set the stroke to red with a clear fill. And that, what that allows me to do is uh, create like a separate outline uh, that is separate from the original clip art. And I'm going to come up here to Dynamic Offset to create an outline around my uh, clip art here. And what that does is it gives me a cut line. I'm gonna stop right here because I feel that I went a little bit too fast when describing the process and I kinda of wanna slow things down a little bit and show you each step of the way and kinda of what went through my mind as I'm uh, going through each one of these steps. So let's get back to the graphic and I'll show you what I did. So we have our original vector graphic and what I wanna do is create a cut line around the perimeter of the vector graphic. I'm going to take this vector graphic, I'm going to duplicate it, control D to duplicate, and that creates a new copy for me, and I'm just going to set it to the side so we can see what we're working with. Now, if I just set a red stroke to that, uh, you'll see that it uh, puts a stroke around all the black areas. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to cut that out, and I don't want that. I only want it around the perimeter. So the easiest way to do this is to come up here to Path, and then break apart. And what that does is it basically takes all the holes and turns them into individual closed objects. Uh, so if we take like this inside, we could illustrate that by just changing it to a different color, like uh, this color. But it is a separate object. And you kind of see that here. Uh, well, we don't really need those objects. Well, so what we could do instead is we could select everything and then we could come up here to path and union. And what that does is it kind of melts everything together, welds everything together uh, so that uh, it's only a single object. And if we zoom in now, we could see we only have the red stroke on the outside and none of the details on the inside. I'm going to set that fill to transparent and I'm going to keep the red stroke. And if we take both of these and let's just go ahead and uh, center them up. And you can kind of see now that the red stroke is only on the outside. So we're dealing with two different objects. Then I could take the red stroke, zoom out a little bit here. And then uh, we don't want to tight up against the, um, the graphic. We want a little bit of a margin around that. Uh, so we could do what's called an offset. So we go to path dynamic offset and then there's like this little square here you could grab and you could pull that out and it creates a new uh, outline or it doesn't create a new outline it just kind of expands out the outline so you have a little bit of a perimeter around your artwork. I hope that was helpful as we kind of slow things down so you can kind of see each step of the process as we create that uh, cut outline around the perimeter of our artwork. So let's jump back into the tutorial and pick up where we left off. Uh, from here, we need to make a little area to hold our jewelry hardware. So I'm just creating a little circle here, duplicating that, and I'm going to create a smaller circle, and this will be the actual hole that's cut in. And let's just go ahead and resize that, and that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to select both of the circles, and I'm going to do an align and distribute and center it within uh, the selected area. That way, this hole is centered uh, within that little bump out. 
From here, we're going to go up to difference, and that basically creates a single object with a hole cut in it. And then I'm going to select the outline and the, uh, the little jewelry hardware uh, bump out. And I'm going to come up here to path and union. And basically that welds it all together. So now we have our clip art, and then we also have our cut line. So we're going to select both of those and group them together, and that way I could use this as a single object. Uh, earrings come in pairs, so let's duplicate that and flip that horizontal so we have a duplicate pair of earrings. Uh, I'm going to try to maximize the space as much as I can here. So I'm going to kind of rotate this around a little bit, maybe straighten this up. Uh, something like that's looking pretty good. You're just going to have to kind of play with it because uh, what we want to do is maximize the material as much as possible. Okay, so now we have these put together. And now that we added like the outline and the little jewelry hardware, it's a little bit taller than we would like it. So I'm going to just uh, select both of these and then I'm going to set the height to an inch and a half again. And that's just going to shrink it down just a tish. Uh, something like that looks pretty good. Uh, I want to be able to uh, nest these into one pair against another pair. So maybe what I'll do is I'll rotate uh, this one and that way they kind of fit a little bit nicer. Maybe something like this. And that way when I duplicate this and create pairs, they kind of, uh, they kind of set next to each other a little bit nicer. So I'm going to select both of those. And then let's just start creating our pairs. So duplicate, control D to duplicate, and we'll do four across. And we'll get them kind of close together and we'll select all of these and then we'll distribute them evenly across the first and the last one and then center it uh, vertically. And then we'll duplicate this one. And we'll try to get each row put back in. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's see how these are setting. So we'll just go ahead and distribute these and then let's take a quick zoom in just to make sure how they're looking. And it looks like they're overlapping a tish. So maybe what we could do is maybe move the top row over a little bit. Let's nudge that over because there's a lot of negative space in here and maybe we could even pull it down just a little bit. Let's pull this down a little bit. I think something like that looks pretty good. So let's get rid of these other two rows. We'll select both of these, we'll group that together and we'll duplicate that in order to create our next two rows. So let's go ahead and take a look. Those are overlapping. So let's nudge these down a little bit, something like that. And then let's go ahead and center these, zoom in again. Oh yeah, that looks a lot much better. In fact, we can nudge this up just a little bit. Something like that looks pretty good. So let's select both of these. We'll group these together and then that way we could uh, center everything within our workpiece. And then all we gotta do is save it for the K40. So I'm gonna come up here to document properties and down here we're gonna resize to the page. Close that and then we'll save the file as Pickle Rick earrings. And that way we could send it over to the K40. So this design actually turned out pretty good. If you'd like to see this project come together, be sure to check out this video right up here as we get this uh, design on the laser and put everything together. If you found this video useful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. That really helps me out an awful lot. And if you like what I do, please subscribe. I'd love to have you on board. That's all I got for this time. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye.